My topic today is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. You know, God has given us his word for us to follow and for us to be successful in this life. And so we're going to look to his word today because in Psalm 119, verse 105, it says, your word, God, is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. So God's word is going to teach us today how we are to go. It's going to show us the way. It's going to light up the path for us. Now, when Jesus first started his ministry, first he was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended upon him. The Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And then when Jesus came back, he started his ministry and he started healing. And then he went upon, uh, uh, we call it the Mount of, um, where he gave his first discourse, the Mount of the Beatitudes. Some people call it the Mount of Beatitudes. It has a proper name. And he went upon that mountain and he started preaching that former famous sermon on the mount. That's what we call it. Now, when he first started his ministry in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, he and John the Baptist did the same thing. They preached the, the same message. Repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand or the kingdom of heaven is near. And on the serpent on the mount, Jesus started telling us about what the kingdom of God encompasses. And he preached on what the laws and the privileges and the rewards of the kingdom were. And in Matthew chapter six, verse 33, he told us one of the laws of the kingdom. If we wanna be successful in his kingdom, he tells us in Matthew chapter six, verse 33, he says, but seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Seek God's way of doing things. Seek God and seek his way of doing things and being right. And everything will be added unto us. That is one of the main spiritual laws of the kingdom. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God to their son. We are now in the kingdom of God and we need to know how to function in this kingdom. You know, just like when they founded the United States and they have the constitution of the United States. You have to, the laws in the United States run by the constitution. And so Jesus has his constitution in his kingdom and in order for us to benefit from it, we have to follow his laws. And one of the main laws is seek God first and his kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added on to you. So Jesus starts first talking about the kingdom in Matthew chapter five. And in Matthew chapter six, he tells us how to pray. Matthew six, nine, he says, our father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there's even a prayer in the kingdom. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Verse 14 says, for if you forgive others when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive other their, others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. So we have there are laws in the kingdom that we have to follow in order for us to reap the rewards. And then drop down to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. God is proclaiming his kingdom. He says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do, rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
So this is where God prefaces um, where we are to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto us. He says, do not store up for ourselves treasures here on earth. Do not spend all your time trying to become wealthy on earth. Because guess what? It's going to rust and it's going to be destroyed. You know, we, we go to the car lot, we buy a brand new car. By the time you take it out of the lot, my God, it depreciates how much? <laughs> Thousands of dollars already. <laughs> you know, we have seen many prominent, very wealthy people live very prosperous lives, famous lives. And when they die, they can't take their houses and their cars and their money. You know, some people put their money in their casket. But what good is it down there in the, in, in the earth? And that's why God tells us, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy. And where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If our heart is in heaven, you know, we're focusing. Our treasure is in heaven. Our hope is in heaven. Our names are written in the book of life. That is a treasure for us. Ain't nobody can go up there, go, go take it out, go blot it out. Only us if we turn back from serving God. That's where our treasure is. And then he continues in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And God is saying, listen, if I tell you that I have an appointment with you at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings, you got to make that a priority. That's how you seek me and the kingdom. That's how you come and you spend time with me. I have called you to pray to me and to seek my face. I've called you to read my word. I've called you to fellowship with my people. Pray, read the word, fast. Do not forsake the gathering of, our, of ourselves together. All of those things, prioritizing those things. That's how we are seeking first God and his kingdom and his righteousness. And he promises that he's going to provide for us. He's going to heal us. He's going to guide us and protect us as we are prioritizing him, as we are seeking him. Because he's a faithful God. You know, we're in election season and all, you know, what is on one of the hot topics is immigration. There are people who are seeking for America and they come through the jungle in, in, in South America because they're seeking America. And God says, we're to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness in the channel in, in Britain, over 801 People were on, you know, were traveling through the channel and this boat capsized. Eight people, you know, lost their lives. They were seeking 
Europe with all their strength, all their power. And God calls us to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We're going to put all of our energy in it. These people are seeking for a, a different country for them to, you know, be able to prosper. And God has called us to seek his kingdom, which will never be destroyed. America will be destroyed. Europe will be destroyed. God is going to bring in a different system, but God's kingdom will never be destroyed. God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion endures forever. Anyone can stay at anywhere in this world and follow the principle of Jesus. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And everything will be added on to us, to them. We see Abraham. He, was, he wasn't in the United States. He was in a different country. And God called him and told him to leave all his family behind. And he's supposed to go to another country. And Abraham didn't say, mm -mm, God, you know, you know, it looks kind of iffy there. That's a big risk for me. I am here. I am very settled here. Uh, everything for me is, is here. My family is here. You know, I have my business here and everything. No, he's, he, 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 uh, he was obedient. He prioritized God. He sought God first and his kingdom. And God blessed him. God provided for him. God protected him. We see the Jewish people. Oh, God called them to seek him first and his kingdom. And Moses led them through the wilderness. And God protected them and delivered them. He gave them his word for them to follow so they could be prosperous. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 24 and 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 24 and 25 it says the Lord commanded us to obey all these decrees and to fear the Lord our God so that we might always prosper and be kept alive as is the case today and if we are careful to obey all this law before the Lord our God as he has commanded us that will be our righteousness they were seeking God first and his kingdom and his righteousness. And everything was added unto them. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 5. It says, during the 40 years, God, God, uh, Moses is speaking. During the 40 years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. God is speaking through Moses. You ate no bread and drank no wine or other fermented drink. I did this so that you might know that I'm the Lord your God. During the 40 years that I led you through the wilderness, your clothes did not wear out, nor did the sandals on your feet. As God's people down there in the wilderness in Israel, in the Middle East, as they were seeking God and seeking him first and prioritizing him, God fed them manna. He gave them water from the rock. He gave them quail to eat. He was their cloud by day and their fire by night. And he kept their clothes and their shoes. As they sought God first and his kingdom, everything was added unto them. Let's turn to 2 Chronicles. We're going to see how King Asa, King Asa of Judah, he called his people to seek God first and God rewarded him. 2 Chronicles chapter 15. We're going to start in verse 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. It says, Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. He removed the foreign altars and the high places, 
smash the sacred stones and cut down the Asherah poles. He commanded Judah to seek the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and to obey his laws and commands. He removed the high places and incense altars in every town in Judah, and the kingdom was at peace under him. So he was seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness, God's way of doing things. He knew that these Asherah poles were an abomination to God. So he tore it down. He tore down false religion and he sought God the proper way. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, his right way of doing things. So that means we're not going to steal. We're not going to deceive people. We're going to do things the right way. And God promises that everything else will be added on to us. Verse 6. He built up the fortified cities of Judah since the land was at peace. No one was at war with him during those years for the Lord gave him rest. When we're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, God's going to give us rest. Even if an enemy comes against us, what we're going to see, God's going to destroy them for us. Verse 7. Let us build up these towns, he said to Judah, and put walls around them with towers, gates, and bars. As we're seeking God's kingdom, God's going to give us wisdom. The land is still ours because we have sought the Lord our God. We sought him and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. They were doing something. They were seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness. Asa had an army of 300,000 men from Judah, equipped with large shields and with spears, and 280,000 from Benjamin, armed with small shields and with bows. All these were brave fighting men. Zerah the Cushite marched out against them with an army of thousands upon thousands and 300 chariots and came as far as Marisha. So here he is, he's seeking God. He's putting God first, he and, his, and the people. And what happens? When we are busy seeking God and putting him first, you know who's always gonna try and come against us, right? Asa went out to meet him and they took up battle positions in the valley of Zephan near Marisha. Then Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, Lord our God, for we rely on you. And in your name, we have come against this vast army. Lord, you are our God. Do not let mere mortals prevail against you. As we are seeking the kingdom of God, we know we're in a spiritual war because the devil ain't happy with us seeking God's kingdom. But Asa shows us what we are to do. Because as we're continually seeking God, we cry out to God for help to give us aid against the enemy. Verse um, uh, 12, the Lord struck down the Cushites before Asa and Judah. The Cushites fled and Asa and his army pursued them as far as Gerard. Such a great number of Cushites fell that they could not recover. They were crushed before the Lord and his horses. The men of Judah carried off a large amount of plunder. They destroyed all the villages around Jewar, for the terror of the Lord had fallen on them. They plundered all these villages since there was much booty there. They also attacked the camps of the herders and carried off droves of sheep and goats and camels. Then they returned to Jerusalem. The Lord God gave them the victory against their enemies and gave them the plunder of the enemy. As we are seeking God and that devil comes against us, the Lord God is going to give us the victory and we are going to get plunder. We're going to plunder our enemies in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Second Chronicles 15 says, the spirit of God came on Azariah, son of Oded. He went out to meet Asa and said to him, listen to me, Asa and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. The Lord is with you when you are with him. 
If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. If you are with the Lord God, if you are seeking him, he's going to be with you. And we're going to find him as we seek him in the name of Jesus. The Lord God is with us. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be given unto us. Psalm chapter 145 verse 13 tells us about God's kingdom. We don't have to worry. In God's kingdom, there's no lack. Everything is in God's kingdom that we need. There's no shortage. There's no shortage of power. There's no shortage of strength. There's no shortage of money. There's no shortage of love. There's no shortage of the Holy Spirit. There's no shortage of encouragement. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 145. There's no shortage of healing. There's no shortages of deliverance in the name of Jesus. Psalm 145, verse 13. It says, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures through all gener generations. We are in a kingdom that is an eternal kingdom. We don't have to worry and say, oh my gosh, my kingdom is shaky. Our kingdom can handle anything. It's the only kingdom that is always left standing. Everything else is falling, but only God's kingdom shall endure forever. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, God tells us that only his kingdom is going to endure forever. He's going to destroy all the other kingdoms, but only his kingdom is going to endure forever. So we should continue to seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness, and everything else will be added unto us. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. It says, in the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the vision of the rock cut out of a mountain, but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. God promises us that as we seek his kingdom first, this is the best kingdom. There's no other kingdom like his. Every other kingdom God is going to destroy. Only his kingdom is going to remain. In Matthew chapter 19, there was this rich man a rich ruler and God told him to come and seek first his kingdom but he didn't want to he loved the kingdoms of this world so he didn't obey God to come and seek his kingdom first Matthew chapter 19 Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, it says, the rich and the kingdom of God. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there's only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Okay? Which ones he inquired? Jesus replied, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as, you, as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Then Jesus said to his disciples, truly I tell you, it is hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle 
than for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished and asked, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with human beings, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Peter answered him, we have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? What is the purpose, God, for us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness? We have left our fishing jobs. We have left our, our you know, the world to follow you. Jesus said to them, truly, I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. This rich man couldn't give up his wealth. You know, God would have blessed him. God would have restored his wealth. Probably he got his wealth, not by righteous means. When you start serving God, you got to start all over. Because you can't build upon a faulty foundation. And God would have blessed him tremendously. God didn't want him to be poor. God would have provided for him. God would have blessed him tremendously. God called him to come, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. But he couldn't give up his wealth. Going to give up his wealth. God doesn't call us to be poor in this world. Listen, when Jesus Christ was born, he was very rich. Those three wise men came with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. God took care of his son. And God isn't calling us to be poor. But he promises, he says, if you'll seek me first, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to provide for you. But he couldn't. Seek first God and his kingdom. And he went away sad. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? What does it profit? What does it make sense? You see people here with all the power and the money. And then, you know, we're in the end times. The scripture says that men are going to run to the, to the mountains and say, fall upon us. The wrath of the lamb has come. Some are going to pour out their money in the streets because it's no good. If you don't have your health and your strength, how oh, good is money? It is not money. It is the love of money. That is why God is trying to deliver us from the love of money. Because that is what the Antichrist is going to use. It's going to, we're going to have a, a, a mandate all over the world. That anyone who wants to buy or sell, you have to get this mark. Don't think it's going to be something in you. It's probably going to be something in us. And it says, the Bible says, if anyone takes that mark, they will not see life. They will lose their salvation. And if we're not trusting God, if we're not seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness now, that's what God is, is teaching us how to trust him. Trust him in every single way. So that even... When evil comes upon this world, we're not going to go run and take the mark. We're going to say, mm -mm. I trust my God to take care of me. He will provide. Satan knows, you know, what is, in, what is the main thing that people worry about in this life? Money. Money. Seek first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And everything else will be added on to us. We don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about anything. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. In Matthew chapter 24 verse 36 
Jesus speaking about the end times, he says, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but only the father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the son of man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the, left, and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a handmill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, Keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you almost must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. As we're here busy seeking God for us and his kingdom, we know we are safe. Because we won't be like the foolish virgins who, who, who don't have enough light in their lives. We know. We have been obeying God. We are here seeking God first and his kingdom. So we know everything will be added unto us, including salvation, including God is going to protect us and shield us and rapture us. Matthew chapter 24 Verse 29, it says, immediately after this, the distress or the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the peoples of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. God promises us that as we are seeking him and putting him first, he's going to come for us. When the tribulation comes, right before God pours out his wrath upon the wicked, he is coming for us. Everything else will be added unto us. Salvation, finances, protection, healing, deliverance. God promises as we seek first his kingdom and his way of doing things right, everything is going to be added unto us. And that is why he calls us to trust in him because he's faithful. He's not going to give us a promise and not fulfill his promise. He says, the just shall live by faith. Amen.